Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is my 130 PDS, uh, well, what's left of it, it's all stripped down again. So I've been doing some videos, stripping it down and making some modifications to it. And I'll put some links in the description below of my other videos. So if you haven't seen them, you can check them out. But what I've been doing is I've been uh, listening to other people and making modifications to the scope to make it perform even better. And what's great about these scopes is there's so many mods you can do. So um, today I'm going to flock the scope. So hopefully you'll uh, join me and we'll uh, get it flocked and see what difference that makes. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flock the inside of this tube. Now I'm going to show you a picture of the inside of the tube. It is matte black and the paint is, uh, you know, a matte finish, but you can still see there is a reflection on the surfaces there. Now I know we're in daylight, but obviously if we can cut down on the reflection in daylight, that is going to improve things at night time. And from a lot of people I've spoken to, flocking the tube is a really good way to uh, cut down any internal reflections and to really improve the contrast. If you'd like to see how I've stripped the scope down, uh, there's a, a video called Boost Your Newt, which is in the description below, uh, a link to that video, and that shows me stripping the whole of the scope down to just a bare tube. So I'll refer you to that because obviously I don't want to just repeat the same video again. It's very simple to take apart. So if you just look at that video, that will show you how to get it into this condition here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using some flock paper. And this was really kindly given to me by Neil Springate of the UK Cloud Magnets. So while I was at my recent cloud camp, actually testing out the 130 PDS after my last mod of painting the outside of the mirrors, I took an image of the dark shark and uh, I was really pleased with that. But Neil uh, has also got um, a sky watcher. I think he's got a 150 PDS and we were talking about the benefits of flocking and other things that can be done. And after my last video, I got so many suggestions of other things that you can do. And I've been very busy working with uh, other people and I'll get into those details on another video, but we've been 3D printing parts, etc. And uh, we'll share those things as well. But today we're gonna do the flocking of the tube. So I've got the flock paper and uh, we're gonna look at what we need to do to get this done. Right then, so onto the tube. So one thing we do need to know uh, is that we can't flock right to the edge because the collars on both ends have got uh, a lip that needs to slide inside. So the flock paper mustn't intrude on that. So I'm just gonna give that a measure. And then we'll know how far into the tube we can start the flocking. So it looks like nine, 10, 10 mil possibly, let's have a look. Yeah, pretty much 10 mil. So that's where we're gonna be going in. So we need a 10 mil gap from the edge of the lip and we're gonna flock it. Now I've just gotta make a decision of do I flock lengthways all the way in or do I flock two pieces and wrap round. Looking at it, it's, oh, it's just short for going all the way round. Can you use this cable? I could most maybe do it mathematically, but I'm not going to. Right. So it won't go lengthways all the way round anyway. So I think I'm going to do it in two bands, and there'll be a join. 
I think I'll have the join down the bottom end because I think more light will be affecting the top end of the tube rather than the bottom end because it's got a lot further to go to start hitting the sides of the tube. Obviously any light pollution outside and that could easily reflect onto the side of the, of the tube there. Right then, let's just uh, make sure everything's nice and clean around here and then we can uh, start to have a look. So what we'll do first is we'll work out how much we need for a wrap around. Maybe I should flop the outside and give it an interesting look. As it happens, I have actually got some vinyl wrap and I am thinking of wrapping the tube to give it a slightly different look. Okay, let's just pull that tight. Now it's got all measurements on it anyway, which is really good. But I made a cut. And I've actually got some wallpaper scissors, which I'm going to use for this. this is going to need a good hoover. All right, we'll see how we get on with this. Okay, so we've got to go inside at least 10 mil. Gonna mark that. Put me inside that lip. I can imagine this is not gonna be that easy, but we'll see what happens. First thing we'll do is we'll push the paper in. See how that pushes out. I don't suppose it's going to hurt if there is a slight overlap, actually. So that's fine. There's a crease, natural crease there anyway. There's a natural crease there anyway. So I'm going to start with that. But I'm actually going to do it this end because... This is the end, there we go, there's a natural crease there anyway. So, this is gonna be, this is fun, about 10 mil, but I want it. And the problem you've got is this paper does not want to assist you in any way. So let's um, roll that up a bit. I'm learning as I go here, guys, because I've never done this before. So what I've got, I'm looking at that and then working it round. Right. And that's where we're looking to stick it. How am I going to get the backing paper off and stick in this at the same time? So I think what I'm going to have to go for is a whole length 
and then work it down as I go. So we just peel off a bit. And I really do hope that the video is capturing this because if it's not, I'm really sorry how clear it is, but I'll try and be as clear as I can with it. Well, I want this rolled up. This bit here, I think if we roll this bit up, kind of gets it out the way. Now, come back here, get hold of the paper. So I'm a bit blind now. What I want to do is get it so that the whole backing is coming away and we can run it ahead of itself, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. Now I'm using this natural seam inside to start the, the initial piece. I think the second piece is actually going to be a lot easier. So I'm just going to check the camera. for the last bit now. <laughs> now, oh. surprisingly, even though that looked like a really unusual method and a bit of a fight it's actually gone on very well and there's literally no great big bubbles or lumps so I feel one bubble there I've got to work that out right it's that one bump there so if I lift from this end because it's in the middle You've just basically got to lift it away so that you can push the bubble out and then work it down. That's good. And then it's funny actually, there's a few little, you feel a crease, but you can actually push it all the way out. So I think the flock paper takes a little bit of work just to get it um, bubble free. If I get a bit of light down there, it will help me see any areas that need pushing down. Now one of the things, I've got a big bubble there. Now I think if you put a little cut where the bubble is, you can push the air out and it will seal back up because it's all. So I have one big bubble there. I'll just put a little slot in the thing, let the air out and it managed to push it flat. And I've got another one. They're very hard to see actually. It's very dark in here, which is good. Yeah, that's how to get rid of your bubbles, guys. Pop them. Uh, I'm hoping that you can see down there. That's it flocked to that part. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to just, I'll just put that there. That's how flat my bench is, not. So hopefully you can see there how dark it is down there. And you can just see this end bit here, still got that, the light reflecting on it. And then when it gets to the flock, it's a lot darker. Right, let's get this front bit done. Oh, actually, it's the back bit. So I'm sure that was extremely entertaining watching me have a good old fight with the uh, with the flock paper there. But it looks like it's uh, it really does make an improvement, and it's instant as well. There's no uh, there's no delaying seeing what it does. So what I need to now do is get a small piece of flock paper for this end bit here, which I'm going to do. So, you know the length. That's typical, isn't it? It's not going to go all the way round. I have to use this other piece. Well, actually, we've got a piece here that's been, I think, Neil must have a dog <coughs> or a mouse got hold of this. <coughs> Made a bit of a nest with a bit of flock paper, but we don't need the full whip, so we'll use this. That'll be good. Can't leave anything anywhere, can you, nowadays? Something wants to eat it. So we're looking at this line here. Let's just give that a quick mark. There we go. What bit did I measure? I have to watch the video back to find out. Was it this bit? No, it was the other bit. Good job actually, because that bit's a bit tight. Right. That's it, and what we need to do now is work out the depth. And it's gonna need to be about 10 mil. So we're looking at there. Okay, we're on that line there. Cool. What we can do now is just cut. A strip here that's going to fill that section. So this is going to be a little bit a little bit easier he says could be completely wrong so we went that way last time so I'm gonna go that way again
I will say there's something quite satisfying doing this job. It's uh, quite nice. Now, I've done a slight overlap on that. I'm sure that is not going to be an issue at all because the mirror sits inside the edge and it doesn't actually, you don't actually photograph any of the edge of the tube, so it won't matter if there's a slight overlap. You just don't want it casting any shadows or sticking up in the air. Right. That's the tube flocked. Okay, well the smaller bit definitely went in a lot easier. Um, and that is the tube flocked. Um, what I need to do now is get a standing knife and I'm going to cut out obviously all the parts that need the uh, holes for things to be mounted etc. But let's take a picture like we took earlier of the actual tube and have a look at the, uh, the amount of reflection that's inside. Uh, so I'm going to put the mirror cell back on to start with and then uh, we can have a look at, at what we uh, need to see. So I've just put the primary mirror cell back on and uh, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to just cut this hole here where the focuser goes in because that was open when we took the original picture and I want to make a comparison as, as good as we can. So this will let in some light and we can make a comparison then between flocked and not flocked. So we just cut round this. Nice and gently. Bingo. And what we'll do now is we'll take the same picture we took before and have a look at the difference. Okay, so looking at the first tube here, you can see the reflection on the paint uh, around the sides and down the length of the tube. And if you look at the right hand side there, you can actually see a daylight uh, coming in at the back of the cell, um, which is the light leak at the back. and. Uh, on a following video I've got a solution for that which I'll share with you. Moving on to the tube now it's been flocked you can see a vast difference so um, it's much much darker inside and any light that's getting in there it's not bouncing around and lighting up the whole of the tube. So I do think that for something so simple, it's quite a big difference to the tube and I can see why people do flock in. So um, before I put this book back together properly, I will be vacuuming out the inside to make sure I've got rid of all the little flecks and as much of dust as possible, because obviously that's either gonna end up uh, on one of my mirrors, uh, primary or secondary, or even both maybe. But uh, I'm really pleased with the uh, result and uh, it wasn't too difficult to do. So I hope uh, that video was helpful to you if it's something that you're thinking of doing. Um, I have actually used the scope since flocking and uh, I have definitely noticed an improvement but I also did some other mods that I haven't shared with you yet. So I don't want to show you any images yet because I've also got some extra mods on the mirror and uh, something to help prevent the light leaks at the back of the scope. If you look at the original picture of before um, it was flocked, you'll notice at the back of the scope there is a light leak around, especially the right hand side of the mirror cell. So I wanted to try and get something to stop that too. That video will be coming out very, very shortly. So uh, keep your eyes open for it and I'll get that uh, out to you as well. 
Um, thanks ever so much to everybody uh, that uh, contributes to my channel. Um, really, really do appreciate all your support. My channel members and Patreon members, thank you ever so much. That means a lot too, and it really helps. Okay, so um, that's the tube flocked and another mod under my belt on this uh, scope. There won't be anything original left by the time I finish, but I really do enjoy uh, doing these mods and they all seem to improve the images that you capture with it so they're all worthwhile doing so uh, any thoughts or things that you'd like to add please pop them in the comments section below I do love to get your comments and I do reply to them all so thank you ever so much and until next time please take care and wish you all clear skies <laughs>